steam locomotives in miniature at the steam workshop. This is the water pump, and what this does is it takes water from the tank and either pumps it into the boiler or recirculates it back to the tank. And there are two pipes, one is the water pickup, and this is the one I'm working on at the moment, and the other one next to it is the water return. But obviously because it's a water pipe it needs a gasket. Well they both do, so I'm making two gaskets, one for the water pump inlet and one for the water pump outlet. And the easiest way to make these gaskets is just to sandwich the gasket material between the two flanges and draw around them, not forgetting to mark the positions for the holes. I can't mark the position for the centre hole, but I've got a pretty good idea where that is, so I punch that first in the centre of the gasket. I found a really easy way of making sure that I punch the holes in the correct place. There's only a spot on the piece of gasket material, so I make a very light impression on the gasket material first, just to verify that the punch is in the correct place, and if it is, I apply a lot of pressure to the punch, which punches very neat holes in the correct place and in no time at all I end up with two gaskets that are a perfect fit on the flanges. The original bolts that held the flanges together were 5BA bolts, but I felt these were a little bit on the large side, so I'm going down to 6BA bolts, which are a bit thinner, but I still need to shorten them, and that's very simple, I just cut them off with a pair of side cutters slightly longer than I need them, and grind the ends on the belt sander. Now it's time to bolt the flanges together, and this should be quite an easy job and indeed it was. As soon as I started to tighten the nut, the bolt became quite solid in the hole, and I didn't even need to use a spanner on the top of the bolt. So I tightened up first one side, and then the other side. You can't really see this, but you'll have to take my word for it, the same thing's happening. The nut is rotating, but the bolt isn't. The nuts on the other flange needed to be at the top. If you look at the flange, you will see why. Insufficient room at the top to thread a bolt through. Once all the nuts and bolts were tightened, I'm using a scalpel to trim the gasket to its final size. And to smooth things off a little bit, I'm using some Scotch-Brite as well. The water inlet pipe to the pump is in place, and the pipe from the bypass valve to the tank is also fitted. The top cap of the pump was fitted with PTFE tape, and it looked a bit horrible. So I refitted it using Loctite 542. Now the simpling valve is working, and the regulator's working, it's time to fit all the 4BA nuts onto the studs around the top of the steam chest. This is a very simple job, but do bear in mind if you're fitting nuts of this size on bolts of this size, do not under any circumstances over tighten the nuts on the studs, because all that will happen is the studs will systematically, one at a time, shear off. And from experience and the fact that I have a very delicate touch when I require one, then it was not a problem, I didn't shear any of the studs. And now before I go for my dinner, I'm giving the top part of the steam chest cover a coat of satin black paint. I'm back from my dinner, well that was quick. The first job to do is to use a needle file and file out the slots so that this part fits over the drag beam at the back of the bunker. I've been informed by a viewer that I'm referring to this thing as a bunker tank, but it's really called a tender. And I would never have thought that, when I think of the term tender, I usually think of the term, the engine has a tender behind, because that's normally what happens with a steam locomotive, it drags the tender behind it. So I assume this viewer is correct, and this part of the traction engine, the back bit, is also called a tender. I don't want to go into too much detail on this side, because it's identical in every way to fitting the other side. Once these slots were a good fit on the lugs of the drag beam, with the help of Dave's jar of Vaseline, I managed to get all the nuts to engage with the threads of the countersunk bolts that hold this part together. And in this clip you can clearly see the nut is stuck to my finger. So I hold my finger inside and then rotate the bolt until it locks into the nut. Now the engine's getting quite heavy, it's mounted on two pieces of oak, so it's going nowhere and I can tip it over to make the job easier and get a better camera angle. In the previous video I got this part wrong, I thought there was just one bolt holding the drag beam in position, but no there isn't, there's one underneath as well at both sides. So I fitted those, so the bunker tank, or as it's now known, the tender, is now fitted very securely to the back of the engine. The flat plate at the end of the axle is now fitted, so it's time to look at some of the safety covers that go around the gears. And these fit together very much like a jigsaw. They will only fit successfully in one position, and they have locating lugs on the inside, 
that engage with each other to hold them in place. The cover that fits over the primary gear from the crankshaft is secured to the larger cover that fits over the secondary gear just using four 6BA bolts. I think it's time to show you this. What is it, I hear you ask? Well, these are the rear boiler supports from the Duke of Gloucester, which is a 7.25 inch gauge 462 Pacific type of locomotive. And these are the expansion joints for the boiler. These special brackets allow for the movement of the boiler when it changes state from being cold to hot. Here's a general shot of the chassis, and this engine is a work of art. It's fitted with Caprotti valve gear, and as John rotates this shaft, look what happens in the steam chest. The engineering standard of this engine is astounding, and I really do look forward to seeing this running. I don't know very much about Caprotti valve gear, so if you want to know more about this, I suggest you just Google the words. Here's a shot panning from the front to the back, and it's a beautiful piece of engineering. And talking of things of beauty, look at the coppersmithing standard on this boiler. This is very well made. It's possibly the best made boiler I've ever seen. Look at the workmanship. This was made by someone with a great deal of skill. And this is Graham who works at the steam workshop. Graham didn't make the boiler, he's just made the smoke box. And this took quite a while and was also a very difficult item to make. It's accurately machined and it fits the boiler perfectly. This locomotive was built using the works drawings, so it's dimensionally accurate in just about every way. These are the oil boxes on the trailing pair of wheels. This is model engineering taken to an extreme level. And that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.